it's December. Merry Christmas. And welcome to our Sunday morning worship service, which includes the reenacting of the Christmas story by the Sunday school children and some grown up friends to help. Uh, as we enjoy this today, let us remember that it's not fantasy like Lord of the Rings or the Chronicles of Narnia. This is actually history. One of the most amazing things about the Christmas story is that it happened with all sorts of people. God has a plan and God works that plan right from Genesis through to the end of the Bible. There were people of all ages involved in the Christmas story. Who was the most important person and the most important one was? Jesus. Can you guess? It was Jesus, of course. <laughs> God's plan included Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, the angels, and the wise men, all who fit into the plan that had revealed throughout the Old Testament, or had been revealed throughout the, whole, the Old Testament, uh, in a kind of hidden way. And now, in the New Testament, those details become very, very clear. The book of Luke was written by me, Dr. Luke, a physician, or doctor in the biblical times, we are going to share with you the story of Christmas as I've written it down in Luke chapter 2. I agree. <laughs> Luke chapter 2, 1 to 4. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirin Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to, Be to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of Bethlehem, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in, a, in claws and lying in a manger. Can you imagine how the shepherds must have felt? They saw the angel of the Lord, these lowly shepherds. They heard the angel's announcement of the Savior's birth. How exciting. And then they saw and heard all of the angels, the heavenly host, together praising God. Let's sing with the angels. <laughs> and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. Being a shepherd and an angel is a full-time gig. <laughs> in Luke 2, 17 to 20, when they had seen him, the shep and they spread the word concerning what they had been told to them about this, this child. And all who heard it were amazed. 
at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorified and praised God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Now, when the shepherds saw Mary, Joseph, and Jesus in the stable, and saw what the angel had said to them was true, they went out and made it known to whomever they met. Which means it's very possible that some of the townspeople went to the stable that very night to see Mary and Joseph and worship that baby Jesus because of what the shepherds had told them. In all of this busyness and moving around, is it possible to forget why we have come to this place in, in the first place? So I remind us today that we celebrate and remember the birth of Jesus, not just because he was born, but because of the life that Jesus lived and the death that he died so that sinners could be forgiven. God's son Jesus came as the greatest gift ever when the shepherds got to the stable and saw what the angels had said to them was true, they went and told everyone they met about the wonderful birth of the Savior. What will you do now with what you have heard about the truth of Jesus Christ's birth? If you don't know him, take some time this Christmas to read the Christmas story in Luke chapter two, written by me. As a doctor, I can prescribe that. <laughs> and consider what he has done for you. Uh, that was just stay. great, wonderful. And uh, I really don't know how much I can add to what has already been said. So I don't want to have a, uh, a three-hour sermon or anything like that. Uh, just very quickly, I would just like to follow up on what has already been said, especially towards the end of the pageant where we quoted John 3.16 and saying John 3.16. Uh, we, we want to just go over again, what is Christmas all, all about? Because in our world today and in modern times, Christmas, the story of Christmas is often confused and clouded and we hear kind of one part of the story and the Christmas story is wonderful but we get often we get used to it and it be, sort of becomes old hat when it comes to the angels and the shepherds not today because the angels and the shepherds were really unique uh, this morning with the pageant uh, so what does the Bible say about Christmas when we think of the Christmas story, we should think about the story of Jesus or his story. And I, and I think that goes right along with history, his story. Our existence and all of history is about his story. And what was his story? His story is the salvation story or the redemptive story. In Matthew 121, right at the beginning, it says, you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. That's what the Christmas story is all about. That's who Jesus is all about. And the story is related to our situation, our need of a savior. There was a quote that I came across and I've used this in a sermon in the past by a man named Roy Lesson. And he says, if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us an economist or a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. But since our greatest need was sin, God sent us a savior. So his story is related to our story. Here it says God has made it clear in the word of God that 
Sin kills and Jesus saves. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus died for his people. And when we think of our need of a savior, most of us know, obviously in life, that we struggle with things. And we have, oftentimes, we have a sense of neediness or loneliness or we need comfort, we need help. And that's, that's our story. That's our experience so often in life. We know that deep down, we can't make it alone. We need outside intervention. That's our story. His story, Jesus' story, the Christmas story, the salvation story relates to our story because Jesus came to take those things that we struggle with every day, to take our sins, to take our loneliness, to take our needs on himself. And he is the way back to God. He is the one who redeems us and reconciles us back to God. So that is the complete Christmas story. There was this radio, I can't remember his name, but a radio personality who always said, now here's the rest of the story. Remember him? This is the rest of the Christmas story because the theme throughout our pageant this morning has been that the, the manger points to the cross. And uh, even in our prelude with those pictures that Bill did for us, the manger points to the ministry of Jesus and points to the cross. And that's why he came, to bring us back to God, to save us from our sins. And through repentance, through belief in Jesus Christ, we can have that right relationship with God. We can be brought back. We can have hope. We can have victory. We can have salvation over those things that would drag us down. Only Jesus saves from sin. Let's read this together, this verse. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And so we sang that kind of closing song, go tell it on the mountain. We need to go and tell the complete story. The story of his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, and his redemption. The fact that he is still able to save people. He's still able to save you and me. All we have to do is turn to him and put our faith in him, turn from ourselves, turn from our sin, turn from our problems, and put our trust and our faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior and as our Lord. And I would invite you this morning, if you've never done that, that I would just invite you to do that today throughout this Christmas season, to think beyond the manger, to think the, for, about the real reason why Jesus came. He came to save us. And so may that be the uh, thought that we have as we leave today and as we go on into the Christmas season, that the complete story is Jesus coming for us because there's a, a line in, in a song, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I love that. I love that line. He came for us. He came as a baby in a manger for us, for you and for me. And he wants you to come to him. And so we would just invite you to do that. In, uh, in the quietness right now of your heart, your mind, if you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, that you would do that right now or this Christmas season. God bless you.